In our previous lesson, we explored the distance sensor and observed how it works. In this lesson, we'll continue with a more comprehensive example by using the distance sensor together with LEDs. This project is designed to inspire your future projects and help you better understand practical sensor applications. After completing the circuit setup in this way, we can move on to writing the code. Instead of a physical circuit, we are going to use the Tinkercad application because it offers us a more visually clear and easier to follow interface. However, you can prepare the circuit either using the physical setup or by following the layout shown in Tinkercad. In particular, it's important to remind you that the long leg of each LED, which is the positive anode side, must be connected through a resistor to the 5 volt power line, while the short leg, which is the negative cathode side, must be connected directly to the ground line. This is a crucial rule when working with LEDs. Reversing the connections or skipping the resistor could damage the LED or make it not work. Let's now begin analyzing the commands. We'll go line by line through the code to understand what each part does. First, we define a variable named trigpin, and this variable will be of the integer type. This variable will control the trigger pin of our ultrasonic distance sensor, which sends out a sound wave. We set the value of trigpin to 9, meaning our trigger pin is connected to digital pin number 9 on the Arduino board. Similarly, we define another integer variable called echopin and assign it the value 10. This pin is responsible for receiving the echo or reflected signal that comes back after hitting an object. Next, we need to define the LED pins that we will be using in the circuit. These will light up depending on the distance measured by the sensor. We declare a series of integer variables to represent each LED, red equals 2, green equals 3, yellow equals 4, blue equals 5, and white equals 6. This means each LED will be connected to its respective digital pin on the Arduino. Then, we define two more variables of the type long to store the values for duration and distance. Since the time and distance values can be large numbers, using the long data type helps store them accurately. Now that we've defined all the variables, let's move on to the setup section of the code where we initialize how each pin will behave. Using the pin mode command, we set the trig pin as an output. This is because it needs to send out an electrical pulse to trigger the sensor. Similarly, we use pin mode again to define the echo pin as an input since it will receive the reflected signal. Next, we need to define all the LED pins 2 to 6 as outputs using the pin mode command. This allows us to control each LED by turning it on or off from the Arduino code. Assuming you'd like to view the measured distance on the serial monitor, we activate serial communication using the serial begin command. This is important for debugging and seeing what values are being read from the sensor in real time. Now that we've completed the setup section, we can proceed to the loop part of the code where the actual continuous operations take place. First, we write the commands that allow us to get a reading from the distance sensor. This sensor works by sending out an ultrasonic wave and timing how long it takes to bounce back. Using the digital write command, we set the trig pin to low to clear any previous signal. Then, we introduce a short delay using delay microseconds 2 to ensure the pin is stable before sending the next signal. After that, we set the trig pin to high and we wait for 10 microseconds using delay microseconds command to send a 10 microsecond pulse. This brief electrical pulse tells the sensor to emit an ultrasonic wave. Then we set the trig pin back to low to complete the trigger cycle. At this point, the ultrasonic pulse has been sent and now the sensor waits to receive the echo. Next, we calculate the time it takes for the echo to return by using the pulse in function. Duration equals pulse and echo pin high. This function measures how long the echo pin stays high, which corresponds to the time the sound wave traveled to the object and back. Once we have the duration, we can calculate the distance. Since the sound travels to the object and back, we divide the time by 2. We then divide that result by 29.154 to convert the time into centimeters. This value is based on the speed of sound in air, which is approximately 343 meters per second. Alternatively, we could use the formula in the comment line. Both give similar results, and the choice depends on which constant value you prefer. 
If we want to calculate the distance in inches instead of centimeters, we'll need to divide the result by 2.54. And if we want to see the distance values on the serial monitor, we can use the serial print command. First, we print the label distance. Then, on the next line, we print the actual value stored in the distance variable. Finally, we use serial print line centimeter to print centimeter and move to the next line. Print line adds a line break, while print continues on the same line. We can check whether this part of the program is working by adding a small delay command and running the simulation. We can make a small adjustment to enable the interaction area of the distance sensor and see the result on serial monitor. As you can see, the sensor is actively measuring the distance. When the object gets closer to the sensor, the value decreases, and when the object moves farther away, the value increases. Now, let's start writing the conditional commands that control the LEDs based on the measured distance. We'll be using if and else if statements to decide which LED should turn on depending on how far the object is from the sensor. If the value stored in the distance variable is less than or equal to 50, the red LED will turn on and all the other LEDs will turn off. This means that when an object is very close to the sensor within 50 centimeters, only the red LED will light up. We use digital write red high to turn the red LED on. Then, we use digital write commands to turn off all the other LEDs by setting their values to low. This ensures that only one LED is active at a time, giving a clear visual indication of the distance range. Now let's define what should happen if the distance is between 50 and 100 centimeters. We use the condition if distance is less than 100 for this purpose. There's no need to check whether the distance is greater than 50, because if it were less than or equal to 50, the previous condition would already have been triggered, and this block would be skipped. Inside this block, we turn on the green LED using digital right green high. Again, we make sure to turn off all the other LEDs using digital right and setting them to low. Next, we define what should happen when the distance is between 100 and 150 centimeters. We use the condition if distance is less than 150 for this. In this case, we turn on the yellow LED by writing digital right yellow high and we turn off the other LEDs to keep only the yellow LED lit. For the next range, which is from 150 to 200 centimeters, we use if distance is less than 200. Here, we activate the blue LED using digital right blue high, and just like before, we ensure that all other LEDs are turned off. Then, for distances between 200 and 250 centimeters, we use the condition if distance is less than 250. In this situation, we turn on the white LED using digital right white high. Once again, we turn off the other LEDs so that only the white LED remains on. Finally, we add an else statement to handle the case where none of the above conditions are met, meaning the distance is greater than 250 centimeters. In this case, the object is out of the defined detection range, so we turn off all LEDs to indicate that. Inside the else block, we use digital right to set all LEDs to low, turning them off completely. To avoid having the LEDs flicker too rapidly due to fast sensor updates, we add a short delay of 50 milliseconds using delay 50. This makes the LED changes more stable and visually pleasant when observing the system in action. After writing all the commands, we upload our code and run the simulation in Tinkercad to observe the results. Let's also open the serial monitor again to keep track of the measured distances to compare the LED behavior with the actual values being read from the sensor. Right now, the measured distance is 77 centimeters, so we see that the green LED is lit. This is correct because, as per our condition, when the distance is greater than 50 but less than 100, the green LED should be active. Let's increase the distance a bit more. As soon as the value crosses 100, the yellow LED lights up. That means we are now in the 100 and 150 centimeter range, which is exactly what we expected. If we increase the distance even more, the blue LED turns on. Then, increasing it a bit further, the white LED lights up. 
Since we exceeded the value of 250, the else block was executed and all the LEDs turned off, we will reduce the distance to bring the reading back below 250. As we can see, when the value is between 200 and 250, the white LED lights up. And when the distance goes above 250 again, even the white LED turns off, confirming that the else block is functioning correctly. When we bring the object closer again, reducing the distance, the LEDs light up in reverse order white, blue, yellow, green, and finally red depending on the new measured distance. This shows that the system is dynamic and responsive to real-time changes. Our project is functioning as expected and the distance sensor is working properly. Let's examine how it works on the physical circuit. In this part, we scaled the formula down to one-tenth. Until the object reaches a distance of 25 centimeters, none of the LEDs turn on. When the distance drops below 25 centimeters, the white LED lights up. As the distance decreases further and goes below 20 centimeters, the blue LED turns on. At less than 15 centimeters, the yellow LED lights up. When the object is closer than 10 centimeters, the green LED turns on. Finally, if the distance drops below 5 cm, the red LED lights up. Due to the sensor's quality and external environmental factors, there might be slight variations in the readings or skipped LEDs during rapid changes in distance. However, overall, we can say that the circuit is working correctly. We have completed our hands-on practice related to the distance sensor. Through this example, we have solidified our understanding of how both the sensor and the LED feedback system work together. These kinds of applications help us grasp both programming logic and hardware interaction more effectively. Thank you for watching and see you in the next educational video.